Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Uh, it's an update on the Emco Turn 140 lathe you see back here behind me. Um, I've actually been working on it off and on for the past few weeks. Uh, the holidays are upon us. Uh, it's uh, oh, almost mid-December now, so things are going to get uh, tight on time to be able to do anything. But I did get the uh, uh, lathe running. Um, let's say it's moving um, so I wanted to share that with you and show you and then I'll I'll uh, run a program here and then I'll take you to the back to show you the cabinet and uh, what we got cooking I still have to get the turret configured and operational but uh, it's currently configured with Centroid Acorn and the DMM DYN4 AC servos um, I'll show you them again in here in a few minutes uh, back side of the cabinet but uh, for now, let's uh, uh, let you watch it cut some air. Um, the rapids are set to 295 inches a minute right now. Uh, I don't have the Acorn Pro license, so CSS isn't working just yet. So anyway, I still need to fine tune the axis, uh, spindles running, um, do all that other work, but I uh, just wanted to share with you this machine running probably the first time in I don't know how many years. Um, but uh, anyway, it should make a nice machine when it's all done. So with that, let's uh, fire it up and let it run. Okay, it's so uh, next tool number is a cutoff tool.
Okay, that's uh, the end of the program. Up here there's a cover that goes over it and then the monitor will sit inside. East stop button will be right down in here. And uh, I'm going to put a keyboard, small keyboard drawer on some full extension slides that will come out and the keyboard will reside underneath the cabinet. This cabinet is about nine inches wide. Let's go around to the back. Okay, it's a little bit messy yet. I don't tie anything up until after I'm done configuring and wiring and everything, so you'll have to excuse that. But over here you'll see the DYN4 drives. Um, the X and the Z are at the top. This is down here is, a, is for the turret motor. And then of course we've got the Centroid Acorn here. Lenovo Tiny PC, I like using those. They seem to work well. And this is the e-stop contactor right here. And then a power distribution block. All my grounds come to one point. The chassis ground comes in here. Any shields and everything come into this one point and go out from there. Um, then I've got 240 volts coming in. And then over here you'll see my fuses. I have a pair of fuses for the VFD, the spindle motor. And then I have a pair of fuses for the control. Um, right now I'm running 10 amp fuses at 240 volts and then 15 amp uh, FRN uh, slow blow fuses for the VFD. And then we've got an ABB uh, switch. It's right here on the side of the cabinet. Powers the entire cabinet up. Uh, if you can see it, just it's right there. Actually, I could swing this around a little bit. There you can get a look at the switch, power switch. Right here is a step-down transformer. It drops 240 volts to 120 volts, and that's for the turret motor. Um, DYN4 will run any, on anything from 120 to 240, and because the turret motor is so small, it needs lesser voltage to operate. Uh, one of the reasons I like the DYN4 drives <clears throat> is because they take 240 volts or 120 volts directly. There is no power supply needed. DYN2 needs a power supply. So by the time you factor in the cost of a power supply and the wiring and all the extra work, I just prefer to stick with the DYN4 drives. Here's the encoder cable. I failed to mention that. That's for the spindle encoder. Um, that pretty much covers the cabinet. It's pretty simple. Let's uh, take a walk over here. Up here you'll see a uh, Huan Yang uh, variable frequency drive. Um, it's their 10 horsepower model. Uh, didn't cost a whole lot more than a 5 horsepower motor. Um, they recommended, and I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and upgrade to the 10 horsepower just for the safety factor. I'm giving this a test. So far the Huan Yang drives have worked pretty well. Um, inside, you can't see it, but I have a braking resistor. It's on the inside of the cabinet. Uh, that's what these two bolts are for. It's holding the braking resistor. And then down here, uh, this is a, a, a lead go uh, electric, uh, five horsepower motor. Um, uh, it seems to be working quite well. Everything's wired up. I'm ready to button that up. Um, you'll notice, if you didn't notice earlier, this is a manual machine, so it's got a manual one-shot oiler here. The tail stock is manual. The only thing that can be pneumatic is the 5C collet closer, and that's yet to be determined. It's pretty hard to see, but just below here, this is the spindle encoder. It's, it's, it's in the back. Um, but this is the pulley and, uh, belted to the spindle at one-to-one. -one. This is the best way to do it, directly to the spindle at one-to-one. -one. Okay, here's the back of the machine. There you see the x-axis ball screw. There's the, DY, the DMM AC servo bolted up. It's a NEMA 34 motor. Um, the X is counterbalanced with this gigantic spring to counterbalance the turret. And then down here we've got the AC servo for the Z-axis. Um, lots of cleaning up yet to do, but uh, it's, uh, it's functional, it's moving, and I'll be doing some uh, final testing, tuning, configuration on the axis next, and then I'll tackle the, the lathe turret right after that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that update on the Emco Turn 140. I was pretty excited to see it moving around again after so many years. Um, this just happens to be an example of the machines that are out there. If you look and if you're patient enough, and sometimes they end up following you home. 
And that's what happened to me with this one. It just, I ran into it and uh, it was originally from Arizona State University. It was cast away, I'm sure, because of the outdated, antiquated control that was on it. Um, it was surplused out, it was purchased. Uh, the gentleman was going to do uh, an upgrade on it, never got around to it, needed the space, and I ended up with it, and here we are. But it should be a really nice machine because, uh, as you can tell, it's not all beat up, it's not all banged up, still has all its paint and everything. So I think this is going to make a really dandy machine for somebody. Um, and again, I think I mentioned to you a little bit ago, it is more of a manual machine. Um, one nice thing is it has a D14 cam lock spindle, and uh, I did get the uh, 5C nose adapter for it. And here's the turret. It's unidirectional. It's not like the it's not like the uh, more upgraded models that have a bidirectional, like a duplomatic or a solder turret, and it has a manual tailstock. Nonetheless, it's a good machine. Um, for you know prototyping or limited parts run and that sort of thing it's nice and compact uh, it's got a door to cover it up it does use flood coolant if somebody wanted to use flood coolant so anyway again uh, thanks again for letting me share with you the uh, emco turn 140 moving again after so many years of being down it's another example of uh, refitting acorn and the dmm ac servos to bring to breathe new life into a machine. All right, talk to you guys soon.